insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 44. Uh, I have my notes wrong. <laughs> All about the space. Uh, I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my astute and energetic co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hey, everyone. I'm not sure where I came <laughs> up with those adjectives, but okay, I'm running out of descriptors here. <laughs> Thesaurus for uh, Christmas. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So just a quick programming note. We uh, This is kind of an experimental uh podcast today we changed our broadcast software over today to one that we have a little bit more capabilities on so uh, hopefully uh, we don't have any technical glitches we haven't done a Fingers full crossed. podcast yet so hopefully moving forward we'll be able to do some new and interesting things so today as the title suggests we are talking all space related stories it seems uh, so in our Disney detective, we have some information on the Mandalorian dethroning stranger things as the top streaming TV show in the U S at least. Then we have a, uh, auction, a star Wars auction with, uh, some unique items we expect to see go for some significant money. Then we have, um, a touching feel-good story regarding Star Wars Rise of Skywalker and uh, Disney's efforts to help out uh, an ailing fan. And then in our entertainment news, we have a new teaser trailer uh, for Rise of Skywalker that celebrates four decades of the Star Wars universe. We do have it queued up. Uh, we'll play... Some of it. I don't know how much of it we'll play. <laughs> Before uh, we. Risking a takedown <laughs> notification again from Disney for advertising for them. Go figure. Right. Uh, then we have a touching, and I did finally watch the. Uh, oh, okay. So we Comcast, can talk about it during. <clears throat> the Comcast ET. Um, I, I'm not really sure what it was. Like, it was a movie, but it was an ad, but it wasn't really an well, ad. We'll talk about it in the. Uh, but we have that. We'll take a look at that as well. And we'll talk about that and, uh, some follow-up news on, uh, a couple of our favorites from, uh, the Orville, uh, who were getting divorced and might not be now. So we'll talk about that as well. So pretty busy, uh, show today. Um, very out of this world show today. Aha. Uh -huh. See what I did there? I see what you did there. Uh, ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Go for Disney Detective. So this was an interesting story. It said that the Mandalorian... Mandalorian? Yeah. The Mandalorian. Yeah, I don't know why. <clears throat> for some reason it didn't see You're halfway <laughs> through the series. You should know by now. <laughs> I was like, is that what it is? Yeah. Has dethroned Stranger Things as its top streaming TV show in the U.S., breaking its five-month streak. So now, obviously, it hasn't been on as long as Stranger Things has, but... Basically, I'll, I'll explain how they came up with it. So, obviously, the Star Wars series, The Mandalorian, has made waves since it debuted on December 12th. Obviously, no thanks in part to, you know, Baby Yoda uh, as well. Um, but now it seems that it's dethroned the streaming champion. So, Netflix Stranger Things has enjoyed 21 straight weeks at the top of Parrot's Parrot's analytical weekly list in the most demand uh, 
uh, original streaming show in the U.S., but it's actually, The Mandalorian has actually now surpassed it. So basically, the way that they do their measuring, it's, um, quote-unquote, a demand expressions, and it's the company's standard TV demand measurement unit designed to reflect the desire, engagement, and viewership of a series weighted by importance. So what the hell does that mean? I don't know. Somebody's funky analytical <laughs> way of figuring it out. That's how they, they came up with this. So basically the Mandalorian has had over a hundred million demand expressions during the week of November 17th through November 23rd. And according to this company, stranger things only had 81 million. So my question there is, does that have anything to do with the fact <clears throat> that Disney stuff doesn't work right? <laughs> I don't I, know. I mean, you know, we've tried, we sat down, not this past Friday, but Friday of last week to watch The Mandalorian on Friday. Right. And it didn't work. We right. requested it on the Apple TV, on my phone, on your phone. Well, that was last week. Right, we that's had, what I'm saying. Right, but last but week my point is, is, right. is the demand request hmm. demand because... fulfillment or demand and not fulfillment? Right, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it... Disney's Plus service has been completely overwhelmed and has been right. completely flaky. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good thing. And as a result, you have a lot of people that are requesting it multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah, could be. And maybe so. it's crashing and starting again. Or, you know, I, I know there are a bunch of people that are watching it more than once that are going back and... And rewatching, especially now that you have like four episodes, kind of going back and let's just watch it from the beginning, right? In you know, in sequence to to see if there's anything you missed that you didn't pick up on, or and the, the definition so. itself is a little flaky. well. And that's the it's thing; almost it's almost like you know, this is. It's almost like Disney paid an outside firm to come up with some made up Who number knows? to make their stuff look you know. Better. So, you know, so their data from last week showed that The Mandalorian is surging towards the top of its list. It was already the most in demand new original streaming series of the year one week after it was released, topping Netflix's The Umbrella Academy and When They See Us. So, you know, so it's not like they just came out out of right. nowhere oh look it, you know the the company's been around obviously um and yeah that that's an interesting thing is how are they you know measuring it um you know and it says while well, demand is a metric that should not be focused with subscriber numbers it is a strong indication that the star wars series is driving a lot of signups to a recently debuted disney plus service Disney obviously had said that they had 10 million signups, you know, a day after launching, but The Mandalorian <laughs> isn't just a huge hit with audiences. It also has a 90% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, and right. that's done by critic score. So obviously, um, you know, it, it's not just the fans that are, are going and watching it. Everybody, you know, is, is interested in it, you know, as well. So... Well, I only hope, you know, I love the fact that the the show is that popular and that <clears throat> it's breaking records. I just really hope that Disney fixes their streaming service so we right. don't have to go through that hell that we went through before. Right. And I was even having issues the other day. I went to go watch something and it crashed and I had to exit out of it and go back in. But then again, I don't know if it's just an issue with our own personal network or if it's something you know we haven't really well no because we looked at <clears throat> well when we, we looked at we the got online it on the phone. indicators right true and we saw that there were a huge spike and you can see the trend the trend line is during peak time right right so if you want to watch disney plus at three o'clock in the morning you're probably pretty good right. safe yeah. to do that yeah so tell us about a Star Wars auction. So a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned that they were doing the Disney auction of various Disney things. So now, you know, right in time for the holidays, we have a Star Wars auction. So it is a collection of 100 lots from George Lucas's Star Wars franchise titled Star Wars Online. And it'll go up for auction at Sotheby's. Uh, in an online-only sale beginning on Friday. The auction will close December 13th, just a few days before Rise of Skywalker comes out. 
Um, the sale includes original posters, stickers, action figures, as well as earlier pieces associated with the beloved film series. Um, prices, you know, are estimated to fetch up to $60,000, you know, for certain pieces. Um, highlights from the online auction will actually be on display in London from December 6th through the 11th. So if you happen to be in London and you want to go... Uh, see some Star Wars stuff, it would probably be a, a good time to do it. Um, so you know, we book our flight yet? <laughs> wouldn't that be kind of fun? We're just going to go to go look at stuff. Um, but it's nice that it's uh, it's an actual online sale as yeah. opposed to, you know, that you don't have to physically be there because like for the Disney stuff, I never really saw, I think it was out in California yeah. that that auction was going on, but it didn't mention anything about you know, looking at stuff online or, or, you know, I'm sure if you're one of those people that, you know, is a high market, <laughs> um, you know, auction or, you know, uh, go, goes to those things, you know, you probably have a way to, to place your bids uh, online. But this is kind of interesting that, you know, it is only online. Um, so they're going to have a variety of options, uh, a variety of items um, from 1980s toy shop displays to original artwork. Um, some of the highlights, uh, well, one of them they were mentioning in the article was a prototype of an Imperial Stormtrooper helmet from 1976. And it's estimated to sell between $35,000 and $70,000 wow. just for the helmet. Um, and then is that the one that you could actually shoot stuff with where the I don't ones know. they finally used you couldn't <laughs> right uh, recently one of the surviving <laughs> screen matching helmets uh, sold for twenty uh, two hundred thousand dollars and in September an iconic Darth Vader mask from Empire Strikes Back sold for nine hundred thousand dollars Wow yeah I don't think we'll ever get wow. one of them. <laughs> So is this is the auction itself um is it a single collector is it Disney itself who's selling it this? doesn't say who who this one is from um you know the article did talk about a sale uh from 2015 of Star Wars memorabilia that was actually from a private collector um somebody from Japan actually a uh, renowned uh, uh, Japanese designer um, who uh, made uh, clothing. He actually sold off a whole bunch of his um, stuff back in 2015 and ended up, uh, how much did he, he did almost like a half a million dollars and he had stuff from lightsabers to cookie jars, um, you know, and he had like 600 items that he, he sold off. Um, so this, it does, didn't say who's the, you know, who it belonged to if, you know, if it was a private collector, collector, or, you know, or not. So, right. but yeah, could be, you know, if you're looking for that one of a kind, really expensive Star Wars gift. I'm looking for, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking for someone to buy it for me too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, that's a little bit out of our uh, price range, but yeah. still cool to, to see what, you know, is in the collection, Absolutely, you know, to even, to even think what, you know, somebody could, could have. So, so what is our Disney feel good story for this week? So this one, this one's been making the rounds of various, um, Disney fans and star Wars fans and, and, and whatnot. Um, so, a um, hospice center in Hampshire, United Kingdom, uh, sent a plea on Twitter asking for an early screening of the movie Rise of Skywalker, which is obviously due out on the 20th of December. Um, so the hospice has said this was our most desperate hour. Sadly, time is not on our side. Um, they were, were putting out the plea for one of their patients who... Um, you know, in various articles, huge Star Wars fan, huge Star Wars fan with his son, and basically wanted to be able to see the movie, you know, kind of his dying wish. Um, the, um, the hospice center had posted on Twitter and said, you know, if there's anybody out there that can help us, then at one point they even tagged J.J. Abrams and Mark Hamill, saying, you know, please, if there was anything, you know, 
you're our only hope, and your best friend in the whole wide world, Bob Iger, actually responded and said, you know, please give us more information and we'll see what we can do. And on Thanksgiving, he had, you know, confirmed on Twitter, on this Thanksgiving, we at Disney are grateful to be able to share the rise of Skywalker with a patient and his family uh, at Rowan's uh, hospice. May the force be with you and with all of us. Um, the patient actually had made a statement saying, uh, during what is such a horrible situation to be in, you have helped make some wonderful memories and bring some joy to my family. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and what I'm going through is completely dire. And to top it all off, I was not going to be able to see the film that I've been waiting to see since 1977. I still can't believe it, uh, is the only way to describe it. I feel like I've won a million pounds. So they were able to fulfill his wish. I'm guessing that they had members from the local local 501st show up. So they had a Wookiee and they had some stormtroopers and they had, you know, some Jedis there. Um, The patient wanted to remain anonymous. He didn't, you know, uh, you know, want anything known. But I think think his identity is secure (laughs) with that picture. (laughs) With that picture. Yeah. Um, And just, you know, the... um, the hospice center was just overwhelmed and, and, you know, just happy, you know, beyond belief. And even uh, I saw a tweet from Mark Hamill where he actually said, you know, kind of trying to, to bring some humor to it, saying that, you know, th- this fan got to see the movie, you know, the full version of the movie before he even right, got right. to see it. You know, how lucky is he? So, you know... Really sweet of, of Disney to to step up and, and, this was, and do this that. And this was one. This was a sort of a thing that they started back with Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, where they had a similar situation. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they had a, a fan who had contacted mm-hmm. uh, Disney about you know terminally ill, wanted to see the movie. Yeah, yeah. And you know, J.J. Abrams took it upon himself at that point mm-hmm. to make it happen, and they've kind of kept that tradition mm-hmm. going and you know it, it, as sad as as it is to have a fan who's in that situation it's nice to see disney step up as much mm-hmm. as i bash disney all the mm-hmm. time it's yep. nice to see disney step up and and make still make dreams like this come true absolutely absolutely and that's what you know they're known for so it's it's you know when you you have the the little things that happen where they it's not so magical you know f- that they still can bring that magic right. to people. That's that's kind of special. Absolutely. And I think that was all we had for Disney Detective this week. Mm-hmm. We'll come back with our entertainment news. So tell me about a story that will get this taken down <laughs> off of YouTube. <laughs> so let's just add some more, you know... <laughs> Onions, uh, you know, I'm not crying, you know, you're not crying, I'm not crying. Uh, This we actually saw uh, while we were watching um, the wonderful world of Disney Magical Holiday Celebration, which was on NBC, uh, on ABC, uh, that actually ran on Thursday. Um, We didn't actually watch it until Friday because we were out for, for Thanksgiving, obviously. And this was a nice little teaser you don't really get to see much of um you know it's nothing new from the new movie but what it it, it's kind of a nice tying things together yeah a nice way to wrap things up tie things up with a bow the bow the bow with a ribbon yeah this is definitely that you know wow you know to to look back at how young everybody was when a new hope came out and to see, you know, the transitions, um, sorry, still emotional. (laughs) Well, let's, Um, let's take a look at some of it. So let's watch it and, and we'll we'll watch some of it and see how much I can get away with watching. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Take a few minutes for the Navi computer to calculate the coordinates. A few minutes. Are you kidding at the rate they're gaining? Uh, no, what is it? You have to shoot this. Traveling through Ivory's mazes like Dustin and Eli Dustin props did without precise calculations and flights close to a store. They're bouncing to a supermarket and then. <laughs> yeah. Be a hell of a What's mess. that? Watch. 
You're losing the fucking shield. Go scrap yourself. Careful on the way out. Yeah, sure. I'm taking the coffee. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go get some coffee. <laughs> you go away. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very simple, basic idea. It's a story about a farm boy in Nebraska and not on Tatooine. It was originally designed to be a modern. <clears throat> so, anyway, the trailer, I'm not going to play the whole thing because I don't want to have to put out another version <laughs> of this that doesn't have it in there. We'll just sort of leave it it's silent in the background. There. Right. Uh, but it's a nice um, little featurette that sort of takes you back. It shows you some of the original stuff. And then it walks you through to the next generation of, of stars in the film. Uh, and it's just, it's kind of a unique little perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of brings out the spirit of what the next movie is going to be about, where it's wrapping up right. the entire saga. Um bringing everything together, looking at where we came from, looking mm -hmm. at how our characters and how our yeah. actors and, and participants have grown. Um, and, you know, it's a emotional ride. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you see everything from, from all of the, uh, the um, trilogies that were, that were shot already. Um, this was, um, where was this? This was on MSN. Uh, dot com. We, we right. actually are pulling this from. Um, the link will be in the show notes if you want to go back and watch the whole thing in its entirety. Um, but it just just really touching. You know, it was it was one of these ones where everyone was sort of waiting for like the next trailer to drop and to see right. the next and clip it was of the just movie. Like, and it's you like you see this and you're like. Oh, it's, yeah. it's all the feels like, you know, and, and to see, you know, Luke Skywalker as a young kid and now, you know, the master Jedi and to see, um, you know, the, the passing of the torch of, you know, Peter May Mayhew. Um, yeah. And I, I can't think of the, the guy's name who, who, you know. Does even, the, even watching, you know, and like, seeing the two of them sitting there together, and and seeing you know the the older versions and newer versions of, of things, just but even seeing like the interviews of Mar uh, Mark Hamill mm -hmm. in the early versions of the movies, the original right, trilogy, right. and now, and seeing the perspective that he had mm -hmm. then and now, and just the level of maturity that mm -hmm. has come through right. all of this. Right, and then you have, you know, um, the new characters that, you know, they feel so honored to be part of this legacy, yep. you know, and, and it just, you know, it, it gives you all those, you know, warm fuzzies. And like, okay, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> okay, we're 19 days away now. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was, closer. it was kind of an interesting take on not showing you more of the new movie, mm -hmm. but showing you more about what the new movie is about. Right. And it's and it's a tying together of all this. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very tastefully done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. It, it was a very short you know, documentary, <laughs> you yeah. know, like it was, it was, if you, you know, cause you know, you know, once the movie comes out, there'll be all these different documentaries and making of and da da da, da and the old movie, new movie. And this was just like a little three minute glimpse yep. of that, of 40 years Very nice. you know, of star Wars. So, so tell us about ET. So this was a cute little commercial that, that came out, um, also, during uh, Thanksgiving, it was actually uh, during the Thanksgiving Macy's Day Parade, uh, it actually ended up showing up, uh, different versions of it showed up later that day during um, various uh, football games uh, during the day. Um, but basically, Comcast... Or Xfinity, uh, depending on who, <laughs> what, what, what the, whatever their identity crisis is, <laughs> for their identity uh, is, uh, decided to to do a little um, holiday reunion, so to speak, and they decided to, um, you know, do ET as their uh, marketing, um, and it was kind of. Um, you know, the reverse of what the Star Wars was, was to get you ready for the new movie. This was kind of, you know, we've never done a, you know, a, a sequel to E.T., but if we were to do something, you know, 30 like years a, later. This was like a great 
preview of what a sequel would look like. Right, you know, mm -hmm. and and it's kind of interesting to see, like, hmm, I wonder if, you know, they, you know, because they've gotten a lot of buzz. Everybody that saw it was like, oh, my God, this brings back so many things. Because, you know, to to be a kid who saw E.T. and now to watch this commercial and, you know, there's Elliot and he's a dad now and he has his kids and his family. And, you know, to to see that, you know, like E.T. never forgot about him. He comes back to, well, you well, know. Well, we're going to watch this one in its okay. entirety because... Xfinity hasn't threatened to sue me yet, so. <laughs> okay, well, let's watch <clears throat> it then. We're going to push our luck on this Okay, one. let's do it. My son, my family. Lots changed since you were here. It's called the internet.
now I'll admit I'm not a solid fan of Comcast or Xfinity either, um, only because of my experience with them. <laughs> um, but that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, pretty I, I cool. think that was a, a nice little uh, touching thing for you know kids of the the eighties who yeah. you know our parents now and you know grown-ups and and you know the the idea you know and and i know i'm a sap when it comes to holiday commercials and and things about you know family and getting together and and stuff like that and it, it's you know that whole reconnecting over the holidays you know having that long lost friend um you know come yeah. and visit you from from Way beyond the like far, far, far away. away. <laughs> you know, it, it's cool, and you know, just the fact that they did like this mini movie. Um, and it was it was very well done. Very, Again, very mm -hmm. tasteful. Yep, quite yep. the tearjerker. Absolutely. Uh, and if you happen to dry your eyes uh, <laughs> by now in this show that's full of space tearjerkers, right, right. Uh, how about a love story, sweetheart? <laughs> Why don't you give us that one? Sure. So two of our, our favorite stars from the Orville, uh, Adrian uh, Pelicki and Scott Grimes. I think you got the names right. I think time. I got it only took me how it many months? It only took four episodes to get it right. <laughs> so we had announced back in May, I guess it was, that they were getting married. And we were kind of excited because, you know, we didn't, you know, I know you don't keep up on celebrity news or things like that well except if we talk about it in our podcast um but i didn't even know that they were dating um it was scott's third marriage and her first um and we were excited that they got married and then all of a sudden two months later uh we were talking that they were getting divorced and yep. that was kind of you know sad and and we were kind of wondering what was going to happen with the new episode of the orville they weren't going to be filming until uh, a little bit later because they're moving to to hulu and stuff um but we hadn't you know really heard much from them um what was kind of funny was uh tmz had reported that the two had obviously taken off their wedding rings um when they were uh somebody noticed when they were doing a panel at san diego comic con in late july and they were actually not even sitting next to each other but they were on the panel and and uh whatnot but then when they did new york comic con in early october they were both wearing their wedding rings. So, hmm. So obviously they've kind of, you know, reconsidered. Um, and what had happened was um, the judge had actually granted. Um, so it was actually Adrian that had actually asked the court to dismiss the request. And the judge had actually granted it um, that same day. So looks like so it's back things on. are... Things are back on. Yay! On again, off again. <laughs> on again, off again, and back on. So, yay. So, we'll, we'll finish our, our entertainment news on a, a love story. Yay. Um, dry the eyes. Yeah, you know, everyone should have dry eyes at this point in time. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, and I think that's it for entertainment news. Yep. And uh, we'll be back with our insightful picks. Mm-hmm. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick this week is another original show from Disney+. Plus. This one is actually branded under the, um, what do you call it, um, uh, National Geographic brand of, of shows. Um, and it is The World According to Jeff Goldblum. So throughout the prism of Jeff Goldblum's always inquisitive and highly entertaining mind, nothing is as it seems. In The World According to Jeff Goldblum, each episode is centered around something people all love, like sneakers or ice cream. As Jeff pulls the thread on these uh, familiar objects and unravels a wonderful world of astonishing connections that are both surprising and exciting. Um, th through fascinating science and history, amazing people, and a whole lot of big ideas and insights, Jeff Goldblum provides an interesting take on the world. So this is a very quirky well anything from jeff goldblum is kind of quirky these yeah, days I was say. <laughs> you know but it's an interesting look at 
at things. So he takes, you know, these everyday things um, and gives you a little historical background on it, maybe how the thing is viewed today and like some some things that you wouldn't necessarily know about it unless you're kind of like in the know I guess so the first episode was on sneakers and talked about you know the history of the sneaker and then they actually went you know he went to Adidas their headquarters and their labs and how they're trying to innovate things with sneakers then he went to a sneaker convention and just the whole um, you know, pop culture thing behind sneakers and how much, you know, people spend, you know, on sneakers, not necessarily that they're going to wear them, but that they're collector's items. So like where we have our Star Wars and Disney collections, there are people that have sneaker collections and and then you know how there's you know um this one designer who makes custom sneakers and you know things that you know again unless you're immersed in that you wouldn't know about um the second episode was on ice cream and and talked about the history of ice cream and why certain people you know why we like certain flavors and and things like that um and then the third uh, was about tattoos and, you know, the the history behind tattoos and even went more towards like the cultural with, you know, um, like um, with native, uh, you know, with with like the Hawaiians and that each tattoo is a, a story versus just, hey, I want a tattoo right. of something, you know, kind of, you know, and, and went to a tattoo convention and talked to different people, uh, you know, about that. Um, the last episode that that just aired, that just uh, dropped this week was on denim and talking about, you know, the, the history of denim and, you know, that most people, you know, first saw it from the cowboys and that, it, you know, it was a, you know, and, and how it's, you know, like Levi's is actually, you know, they this whole new technology to be able to laser print onto, you know, to, to make your jeans look more stressed and, you know, you can customize your jeans, you know, with lasers and things like that and not as many, you know, dyes being used and things and just things that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think of. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of a quirkier version of like how it's made right. where it's like you watch and you're like, Oh wow, this is really dull and boring, but okay. Kind of, kind of interesting how ketchup is made. <laughs> um, but then you watch this and you're like, wow, I never knew this. And, you know, and, and that again, you know, the collectors of, of these various different things and how much money people will spend, right. you know, for, for something just, kind of boggles the mind again if you're not in it you know we're collectors of different kinds and i guess i could see you know like everybody you know has their their thing so again kind of quirky each episode is about a half hour long and just you know just very interesting take on these everyday items that hmm. you know we all use in some way shape or form so very interesting cool pick thank you all right So my pick this week, we're going to go back a little ways here, um, back to 2014, actually. Uh, this is a documentary that is, uh, was released on TV back at the time and is now re-released on Disney+. Plus. Uh, this is Marvel Studios Assembling a Universe, a look at the story behind Marvel Studios and the Marvel Cinematic Universe Featuring interviews and behind-the-scenes footage from all the Marvel films, the Marvel one-shots, and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Marvel's first television special documents the exciting story behind Marvel Studios in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, featuring exclusive interviews and behind-the-scenes footage from all the Marvel films, the Marvel one-shots, and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Viewers will walk a clear path through this amazing and nuanced universe, featuring sneak peeks at the future of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC, new footage from Marvel Studios' upcoming theatrical releases, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, spoilers, and Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy, and a sneak peek at the upcoming Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. So this documentary takes you up 
roughly to the end of phase one, middle of phase two. Okay. Of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and it's interesting going back and looking at some of these now, knowing now what I know versus what you knew at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and you kind of really get a gist of the fact that they didn't know where they were going. Mm. Yet they were smart enough to plant the seeds to get to where they were today. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there was kind of a chaotic genius to the whole thing. Right, right, right. Like looking, you know, if you were watching it in 2014, you were like, I don't get it. But now looking back, you're like, oh, right. Like they talk about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and, you know, we were all there when Guardians of the Galaxy dropped. Mm And there were hints that they were going to merge Guardians of the Galaxy into the rest of the right, Marvel and superheroes. I, and you were like, eh, I don't see that happening. Right, right. Um, and the fact that they knew back then where that was going to end, I think, was just brilliant. Right, right. Um, and, you know, the last our last couple of podcasts, we've talked about uh, the criticism that Martin Scorsese's had for superhero movies. Mm-hmm. And saying that, you know, they lacked story, they lacked this, they lacked that. The fact that you can plant a seed, uh, you know, for an ultimate outcome six years in the future Mm -hmm. is just impressive. It really is. Yeah. Um, That is a marvelous uh, example of storytelling. (laughs) Uh, Like what you did there. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's, It's storytelling, it's character development. Now, granted... You know, Disney kind of had an ace in a hole in this one in that all these stories had been told in one form or another already with as often as the Marvel Universe, comic universe, had been, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, relaunched. Um, But to to take all of that, to put it into um, a new version, you know, it was a different Mm -hmm. version and nothing played out in the cinematic universe the way that it did in the comics... And to coordinate that over all these movies was brilliant. And this documentary is a great glimpse behind the scenes with interviews, behind the scenes footage, and what they, at the time, were billing as sneak peeks into the future, which, you know, looking now, we can sort of, you know, smirk about because we we know where everything went. Right, right, right. Uh, So great documentary. I'd love to see another one of this, this type done Nowadays, mm-hmm. kind of everything the, is done. You know, part to sort two, of, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are ripe to have another one of these put out, and hopefully with Disney Plus out there, it mm-hmm. might be a good good excuse for them to do it. Yeah. So, Marvel Studios assembling a universe streaming on Disney Plus now. Uh, and that was all that I had there. Um, any afterthoughts? No, not that I can think of. We do have the stream from our trip to Shady Brook that'll be in the show notes. We'll publish on our website, mm-hmm. um, which you can get at www.insightsintothings.com. That should be up Monday or Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You can email us at uh, comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter at Insights underscore things. You can get our video uh, podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Our website is www.insightsintothings.com. You can get our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And finally on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast and just a final programming note uh we do have um our holiday treat that we've been working on Mm -hmm. uh, the last week or so uh that should actually be uh, available probably next week i think we'll make it available sure and uh we'll include it as part of the podcast and make it available for streaming and downloading from all of our regular sources sounds good Uh, Other than that, I think we're done. We are. Another one in the books. All righty. We're out of here. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.